A spark jumps between the gap of two live wires. It emits electromagnetic radiation. This causes a second spark in the receiver. Radiation spreads out in all directions, like waves. But back in the 1850s, nobody knew. The scientists were carving their path in the everyday use for electrical power remained fascinated with the use of copper as a conductor for electricity. The telegraph used cable made out of copper, and the telegraph was nothing short of a revolution, enabling messages to be sent much faster than previous means, which relied on messengers riding on horseback. Rapid communication served as the foundation for many nations' economic expansion in the 19th century. In 1852, large cables ran over 300 miles connecting England, Holland, Germany, Sweden. Others were even connecting Italy with Corsica and Sardinia. Cable allowed sending long and short electrical impulses for Morse messages, or it allowed moving flaps up and down on the railways, enabling entire countries to run their train traffic from miles away. But with cable, the transmitter and the receiver needed to be physically connected, and the shift from cable to wireless was yet another evolution in day-to-day -day life. Today, radiophonics are based at Hawkwood College. This was the only way a ship in distress could communicate before wireless transmission came on the scene in the late 19th century. Deep silence reigned on the airwaves, and the only way to find urgent assistance was by cable, but the cable was on the seabed, physically connected to the telegraph exchanges. While some scientists focused on making the longest cable to connect the old world and the new across the Atlantic, in 1901 Marconi was mastering sails with King Neptune, secretly preparing his attempt to bridge the Atlantic. He was in Poljew, Cornwall, southwest England, and he built the biggest transmitting station yet seen. It took a year to complete, but he didn't tell anyone what he was doing. I will only tell my mama about this. The rest of the peoples will only appreciate my ideas when I'm rich and famous. Yes, indeed. Sailing, sailing over the la 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 la. For many people wait for Marconi to go back home today. Can you hear me? Send me a sign. Mama Donna, can you hear me? Me old name is Marconi. We'll get back to Marconi. In fact, we'll get back to many of the claimed or self-claimed fathers of radio, because whoever radio's mother was, not that it matters, she was definitely having the time of her life in the 1890s. In 1865, James Clark Maxwell was making daring equations packed with radical ideas. The agreement of the results seems to show that light and magnetism are affections of the same substance and that light is an electromagnetic disturbance propagated to the field according to electromagnetic laws. Maxwell's equations for electromagnetism have been called the second great unification in physics, after the first realized by Sir Isaac Newton. 
Maxwell demonstrated that electric and magnetic fields travel through space as waves, moving at the speed of light. The unification of light and electrical phenomena led to the production of the existence of radio waves, waves travelling through empty space at such speed only noticeable through electrical experiments that didn't even yet exist. The fact is, Maxwell was asking a lot from his peers, but he was surrounded by sceptical colleagues, and he lacked the proof to support his theory. But a gibbering Maxwell was determined. He wrote an excited letter to his cousin. Oh, I also have a paper of sort with an electromagnetic theory of light, which, until I am convinced to the contrary, I hope will move great guns. <laughs> the guns may have been fired, but it would be a while before they were held. Without a radio set, these electronic waves are not easy to detect. Most scientists didn't believe they existed. It took more than 20 years for a German scientist called Heinrich Hertz to find actual proof of an electromagnetic wave. Hertz made very big sparks created by a machine called the induction coil. This machine was connected to two metal plates with another spark gap in the middle, which acted as a sort of aerial. Hertz's receiver was a simple loop of copper wire, so the big spark creates radio waves with enough energy to make a tiny spark jump across these copper balls in the receiver when they are held very closely together. The sparks are so tiny that Hertz had to let his eyes get accustomed to the dark for 15 minutes and then watch the spark through a magnifying glass. These apparatus only had one range of a few metres, and when Hertz was asked what practical use it had, he said, It's of no use whatsoever. It is just an experiment that proves that Clark Maxwell was correct all along. <laughs> How wrong he was, because yes, Hertz had proved concretely what Maxwell had only theorised, that there were forms of light travelling around space. But little did Hertz know that empirical proof of radio waves was indeed to change the world forever. To be, to be, to be, to be, continue, 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 contin